What's up guys, it's today we have Zach on the show. He's the 10th planet black belt and he's really good. I go shin on shin right away, which protects me from leg locks and makes for an easy entry into single leg X. Zach has all his weight off to the side. Because of this, he's not heavy on me, so I can do a technical stand up looking to wrestle, but Zach denies the opportunity by jumping to close guard and trying to snatch up my neck. I keep my shoulder glued to my neck anytime I sense a guillotine coming. The best defense is to always be preventative and not allow your opponent to take dominant grips like under your chin. I put my knee in Zach's butt crack so I can pry his legs open while also using the assistance of my arms. I like to think of passing the closed guard as breaking the closed guard first and then passing the open guard. If I'm passing from the outside like this, I like to think of it like a puzzle. How can I find my opportunity to move my opponent's legs out of the way without them gripping me with their legs to prevent it? One thing throughout the video you're going to see is rather than trying to escape side control, Zach tries to force north-south instead and utilize his flexibility to look to invert and insert his hooks from my back. I want to pressure Zach's hips down or lift up on his upper body to stop his hips from elevating, but Zach uses his arms as frames to keep me away where I can't put my weight on him. I bail and realize now that I need to stay away from north-south or stay heavier to begin with and not allow him any space. I attempt a step-through pass, but it doesn't work. Zach easily defends and inserts a deep devil heave hook. The position changes and now I'm realizing that the best approach to Zach's guard is going to be to pressure pass him, as he's very flexible, technical, and crafty. Look how I address Zach's frame, his knee shield, I change my angle to go around it. You can't just go through frames, you need to collapse them or go around them. Because I don't have control of Zach's head, I control his hips instead as I work my way up. I get too eager here trying to quickly mount him. I should have got my knee deeper on him, but I got sloppy. As the position resets, I want to make sure I stay out of close guard, because breaking the close guard will just add another step. I'm in headquarters now, and to my left I have the knee slide, and to my right I have the side smash. I decide to go side smash, but his left arm under his leg is preventing his leg from going completely flat on the mat. I settle for half guard and triangle my legs because I can feel he's trying to bring his left knee in front of my hips to use as a frame. I want to stay close and smash, and a frame will make distance. Zach is trying to push my weight off him while trying to curl in his body, likely for a leg lock or back take, but I stay heavy and back step to pass the guard. I'm in north-south again and watch how I adjust this time to prevent his escape. I angle myself off to the side where his frames will be weaker. I went around the frames. I've got him in side control now and this is much better as he's clearly good at escaping north-south. I don't get my arm under his head in time and Zach hits this really cool and unorthodox escape. He takes an Americana grip on me, which at first I think is nothing, but then he uses it to flip me over. Although I'm still on top, I'm back in his guard, which is really frustrating as I just want to get a submission. Just like you got to clear the knee line to escape leg locks, I took the same approach with my elbow, dropping it down and clearing it to escape. If you've seen my video on grip fighting, you'll know that you need to break grips that stop you from doing what you want to do. In this case, it's his left hand on my ankle. I'm trying to figure out the best way to address it without putting myself in a position where you can simply just adjust to different grips that would give me a hard time too. It's not just about breaking grips, it's about improving position in the process. That's where the chess battle comes in. I'm tired of trying to solve this puzzle, so I jump right into the double underpass, and I think about which way I'd like to finish, but ultimately go with the traditional way of pressuring with the shoulder while making an angle. I'm trying to be a little more crafty this time to enter into mount, so I pin the leg with my foot and start working towards the neon belly entry that I tried previously, but I lose control of Zach's arm and he's able to frame with it and bump me over. I'm tired of losing good position, so I bump hard with my hips, which causes Zach to pose his hand out on the mat. Your opponent's one hand on the mat is always a trigger to go for triangle. We can get here by making it happen or your opponent making a mistake. When you have a good bite on your triangle, not much else is needed other than squeezing. A bite meaning the inside of your knee is completely wrapped around their neck with zero space in between. If you can poke your finger through any holes, there's too much space. The bite isn't good enough. I use shin on shin again to get a single leg X. I want full X guard, but Zach is staying heavy on his leg, so I can't loop my left leg underneath. As a result, his right leg is light and I can easily do a technical stand up again to sweep. Understanding where your opponent's weight is will make sweeping so much easier. I'm just going to speed this part up because not much happens. I might as well use this time to tell you about the podcast I started, the Jordan Talks Jiu Jitsu podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, on my second channel, and everywhere else podcasts are listened to. I'll put a link in the description so make sure to check it out.
As Zack sits up, I snatch up his neck and put him in front headlock. It'd be tough to guillotine him from here because Zack still has a guard, but I'm forced to post out anyways, so I make sure to keep a strong overhook to prevent Zack from getting to his knees. I want to keep him on his back. I use the knee slide to pass and now I have Zack back in side control, but what's he looking to do? He's looking to get me back to north-south, which makes sense. I'm a strong and athletic dude, it's going to be hard to bump and shrimp against me. He's looking to use his physical advantages too, like his flexibility. So now we're back in north-south and we're both adjusting to each other's counters. The further Zack can move his hips, the easier it is for him to invert. I lift up on his upper body to keep his hips on the ground, but he shrimps out further. Every escape attempt I learn from and adjust to to figure out the best plan of attack. Now I realize going around the hips and to the back will be the best counter. Zack tries to leg lock me as I do and I just make sure to clear the knee line. I have his back and Zack is making sure to control my choking hand, that's my top hand. It's a grip fight and if I win he gets choked but right now it's pretty neutral as we both have one of each other's wrists controlled. I transition to mount because the grip fight brought his hands up and now mount I'm in a great spot to start attacking those high arms. I want the arm triangle but don't have a good bite on his neck and needs to improve my arm positioning first before putting on the squeeze. The sack bridges and peels my shoulder off his neck and is left with his hands up high still. He frames on my arms likely to do the same style of escape he's been doing in north south. I attacked Americana, but Zack has really good defense. He's on his side now, and I decide it'll be easier to attack from his back instead. I always try to go path of least resistance and try to figure out my opponents as I go. I'm trying to pull my arm deeper under Zack's neck, but because he drops his chin, I would either have to choke over the chin or start over again by sliding my hand thumb first underneath his neck. So I abandon the rear naked choke and start working the arm bar instead by shooting my knee up high in basically the same fashion as a chair sit back take. I like to think of breaking armbar defensive grips like a puzzle too. How can I maneuver their hands in the weakest position to defend? For maximum power, you want to grab at the end of the lever, their wrist. I use the inside of my elbow to extend the arm and then I switch to two hands on the wrist to finish and stop Zack from potentially hitchhiker escaping. You can totally cross your feet in an armbar, it's a myth that you can't. I mean, does it look like Zack has any space to escape? And as always, I'd like to thank my patrons who support the channel. I super appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. If you enjoy my videos and want to support the channel too, make sure to check out my Patreon. Prices start at just $5 a month and I super appreciate your support. All right, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.